If you would like to see some worked examples of proof trees in modal logic, stick around. I'm going to show you some. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through some worked examples of proof trees in modal logic. This is building on the previous two videos where I showed you how proof trees for modal logic work. So if you haven't already watched those, go and have a look at them now. Should be a link to them up here somewhere. We're going to be building on that in looking at these worked examples. If that sounds good to you, do me a favor before we get going. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon. That really helps me out. OK, let's get going. I'm going to be taking you through two worked examples of proof trees in modal logic. The first one is going to be an example of a genuine proof. So the proof tree is going to close. OK, and that's done and dusted. The second one, it's not going to be a proof. So the proof tree is going to be finishing open. It's going to have a finished open branch. And that's interesting because we can use that information to build a model that satisfies the premises, but not the conclusion. OK, so just like in propositional and first order logic, we can take a finished open branch and uh, build us a counter model, one that shows why the entailment doesn't hold. OK, but first let's look at the proof. OK, so we're going to be doing a proof in basic modal logic K, and we're going to show that this conclusion follows from this premise. This entailment is really closely related to the distribution axiom. So if we didn't have that symbol there, but we had an arrow, this would be the distribution axiom. And that's something that's valid in all modal logic. So we kind of know in advance, if you know that, you know that this tree is going to close. But how do we get the tree to close? We go like this. So first of all, we write down the premise and we put a zero. So that's the tag that we use. We always start off with zero. And then we write down the negation of the conclusion again with the tag zero. And then we start applying the rules. I'm going to start off with this negation here because that's not going to branch and it's not going to introduce any new worlds or anything like that. So always best to start off with rules like that. So we're going to get box P at zero and not box Q at zero. It's basically a propositional logic rule. Now I'm going to move on to this one here because again, that doesn't fiddle around with any tags. Tick that one off and it's going to become diamond, not Q zero. OK, now I've got this down to modalities, right? I've got a box here, a box here and a diamond here. So we've got a choice. Do we start doing things with boxes or with diamonds? I think it's best to always start off with the diamonds because what the diamonds do is they build out the model in effect. They create the new worlds and then the boxes ask us something about all the worlds that we've got. OK, so it's better to add all the worlds first and then look at all the ones we've got. So diamonds first, then boxes. So let's apply this diamond rule and we're going to get a new world, a new tag number one where not Q. OK, so not Q one. And then I've got these two boxes to apply. Now they are at world zero and they tell me to do something at all accessible worlds. So I'm using this information here. So I'm going to be adding both of these bits to world one. Doesn't matter which order I do them in. So let's just start off at the top. P arrow Q at world one, P at world one. I'm not going to tick off either of those two lines because in theory, I might add more tags later on accessible from number zero, which would allow me to reuse sentences like this. Box sentences can be reused. OK, so I don't tick those off. As it happens, I'm not going to add any more worlds here because this tree is going to close in a minute. OK, what have we got here? We've got an if then at world one. So that branches, we're going to get not P world one on the left and Q one on the right. Now here we've got not P and here we've got P at the same world, both tagged with a one. So we can close that. And here we've got Q at world one and there we've got not Q at world one. So again, we can close that one. That tree closes. We're done. 
we've shown that that premise entails that conclusion in modal logic K. Why did we show it in modal logic K? Well, because we only used the K rules. We didn't use any of the additional rules for K, T, 4 or whatever. We didn't use the T rule. We didn't use the 4 rule. We only used the basic rules. So we've shown that it follows in basic modal logic K. Of course, if we were asked to do the proof in KT4, that proof would still count. You don't have to use those additional rules. They're there to use if you need to. So if we had to do this in KT4, the proof would be exactly the same. So we could also show that this holds in KT4 or KB5 or whatever. Okay, if it holds in basic modal logic, it's going to hold in all the other ones as well. OK, now let's look at an inference that doesn't hold. Let's see if we can prove from box box P to box P in KB. So KB corresponds to symmetrical frames. So think about symmetrical accessibility relations. Can we get from two boxes to one box? Turns out we can't. But doing this exercise is useful because it kind of shows us why we can't. So we're going to list out our premise, box box P, tag it with zero, and the negation of our conclusion, not box P at zero. OK, let's start off with the negated box rule. So that's going to tick that one off and it's going to give us diamond not P at zero. The diamond rule is going to introduce a new world. So we can add 0 to 1 and not P at 1. Now let's go back to this box rule. Now that we've got 0 to 1 as an extra bit of information, we can add box P at 1. And because we're doing this in KB, we're allowed to use the symmetry rule, OK, the B rule. That's the rule that goes if you've got N arrow M, then you can add M arrow N to your tree. So we've got something like that here. So we can add one arrow zero and we can combine that with box P at one to get P at world zero. At this point, we have applied all the rules. So we haven't ticked off the two box sentences because you don't tick off box sentences, but there's no more rules that we can apply. We've already used the two box sentences as many times as we can. We've applied them to all the worlds that we've got accessible. So from zero, we've got one. And from one, we've got zero accessible. We're not going to get any more worlds. We've applied all the rules. We've also applied the B rule as many times as we possibly can, just the once. So that's all the rules applied. Nothing more we can do there. That's a finished open branch. And when we've got a finished open branch, we can use it to build a counter model. So a counter model is one where there's a world where the premise is true, but the conclusion is false. So it shows us why the inference doesn't hold. The premise can be true without the conclusion being true. How do we build that model from this finished open branch? Pretty simple. Our worlds are going to correspond to the numbers, the tags we've got here. So we're going to have two worlds, zero and one. What accessibility relations are there between them? Well, we just look at the sentences like this. So we're going to have an arrow from zero to one and an arrow from one to zero. So it's going to come back again. And what's going to be true where? We just look at the sentences like this that say P is true at world zero. So P is going to be true there. What about sentences like not P? Well, we don't need to write that down. We just don't write P here because P isn't true there, not P is going to be true there, but we don't need to put that information in the model because it's already there in this basic specification. That's all we need for a model. The worlds, how they're related, and which primitive sentences, the P's and the Q's, which of them are true where. OK, we just want to check quickly that we're trying to do something in KB, so that should be a symmetrical model. Oh yeah, it is. Our arrows go both ways. And let's just check that it does indeed make the premise true. So box box P effectively means in all worlds I can get to, in all worlds I can get to from there, P is true. OK, so from all worlds I can get to from here is there. And all worlds I can get to from there is back here. In all of those worlds, P is true. Yeah, there's only one of them. It's where we started and P is true. OK, so that's true. What about box P? That would mean P is true in all the accessible worlds. Here's an accessible world. 
P is not true there, so that is false. So here we've got a symmetrical counterexample, a symmetrical counter model to this inference. OK, so that's nice. By doing a KB tree test and getting a finished open branch, we can build a counter model to the inference. OK, guys, that is it for today. I hope you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. Coming up next time, we are going to be having a look at proof trees for intuitionistic logic. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope you join me back for that.